Welcome back to Principles of Engineering. Uh, today what we're talking about is we're talking about Activity 1.1.2, Simple Machines. And this first set deal with uh, all of your lever problems, which it looks like are problems 1 through 9. So we're going to go through this. And this is really in case you missed uh, something in class. You just need a little bit of extra help. So let's get started on this. The very first problem, and each one of these uh, problems starts out with asking you to draw it. So the first problem I've drawn right here. And what I've drawn out is the description of the problem. Uh, basically says that you've got a first class lever, meaning the fulcrum's in the middle. Uh, it's in static equilibrium, or not in motion. And it has a 50 pound resistive force, I've put on the left side in green, and a 15 pound effort force, the right side in pink. It furthermore, it tells you that the effort force is located four feet from the fulcrum center, which I've drawn there. So the first question it asks for is it, it asks you, hey, what is the uh, what is the IMA, the uh, AMA of this? <coughs> Excuse me, rather. So let's go through and do that computation. So for question two, question is. AMA. And we know from our formula sheet that the, that the actual mechanical advantage is the ratio of forces. So let's go ahead and get this formula down. The AMA equals to my force resistive divided by my force of effort. So when I multiply that out, what do I get? I get 50 pounds, which is my resistive force divided by 15 pounds, which is my effort force. You'll see that my units uh, cancel out nice and neat. So those two strike out. And then what I end up with is a ratio of 50 over 15 unitless ratio. That equals about 3.33. It's actually a continuous three here. So that one's pretty straightforward. Let's go on. It gets a little bit more difficult, not a lot, but for question number three on this first class lever, the next question is it says calculate the length from the fulcrum to the resistive force, or what I would call my distance resistive. So from this, we know that the two moments are equal because it's in static equilibrium. So when we talk about the moments, I've got a moment for my effort force which is going to equal to my force of effort times the distance at the effort force. And my moment of my resistive is going to equal my force resistive times the distance resistive. So I know these two are equal to each other. And I also know, looking at this, that I have got a couple things already. I've got my distance of effort, my force of effort, and I've got my force resistance. So let's go through and substitute some of these in. Uh, so, coming back here, and I'm going to go ahead back to white. <clears throat> so now I can say my force of effort, which is 15 pounds, times my distance effort, which is 4 feet, equals to my force of resistance, which is 50 pounds, times my distance resistance, which I don't know. So pretty simple here. All I'm going to do is uh, divide both sides by 50 pounds. And you'll see a couple things will happen. The first thing that happens is my units cancel out for pounds. Uh, on this side, 50 pounds cancels out with 50 pounds. So now what I'm left with is I'm left with uh, my distance resistive equals to 4 times 15 and that's in feet, divided by 50, and that's unitless, which equals to 60 over 50 uh, feet, which then equals to 1.20 feet. So that wasn't so bad as your final answer. All right, so moving on, the next problem that we have is problem number four. And that essentially says that you've got a wheelbarrow lifting a 200 pound load. So we know that wheelbarrow load relationship is going to be a class two lever. So what I've done is drawn this out. So I have my fulcrum, which is my wheel. And I'll give a little bit of annotation on this. So this is where my wheel sits. Sorry about that, let me make that active. 
So that's where my wheel is sitting. This is my handle end right here. That's where I'm pulling up on the wheelbarrow. So you can see I've got a 200 pound load in the wheelbarrow, which is two feet away from the wheel. And then my handle length is five feet away from the wheel. And that's where my force of effort will be applied. So once you have that drawn out, the problem becomes pretty straightforward. Uh, the first thing that they're gonna ask us to solve for is they ask us for the ideal mechanical advantage of the system. So as you probably remember, the IMA is a ratio of my distances. Uh, and in this instance, it's my distance of my effort force divided by my distance of my resistive force. That is going to equal to my effort force is at five feet divided by my resistive force at two feet. And that equals to a AMA of 2.5, or rather IMA, rather, unitless, okay, unitless. Now the next question comes in, it says, hey, if it's in static equilibrium, which means it's not rotating uh, about its pivot point, calculate the force needed to overcome the resistive force. So now the, what we're really trying to find here is we're trying to find that force of effort, force of effort right here. So I know the two moments, my moment of my effort equals to my force effort multiplied times my distance of effort. And I know that my moment of my resistive equals to my force resistive times my distance, uh, my resistive force is applied at. So these two equal each other. So now what I can say is I can start to substitute values in. And I'm going to go back to my colored pens here just to make it a little clearer what I'm doing. So what I've got is I've got two feet. Misspelled. There we go. Two feet, which is my uh, distance of my resistive force, times my resistive force, which is 200 pounds. And that is going to equal to... That will equal to... So I want to go to pink. That's going to equal to my uh, effort force, which I don't know yet. So I'll just put it in as Fe multiplied times the distance of that force, which is five feet. So pretty straightforward here. Let me go ahead and put some cancellations in yellow. So I'm going to divide both sides by five feet. Divide this side by five feet. and then go back to my white pen here. Uh, what I now get is my five feet cancel and I get force effort equals to two feet times 200 pounds divided by five feet. My units will cancel out here for feet, so I actually get uh, 400 pounds divided by five. And that equals 80 pounds of effort to lift up that wheelbarrow. So that's what Fe equals to 80 pounds. We found that through static equilibrium. So that was pretty straightforward. Let's move on to our last one. And this one's a little harder to envision or to draw. So what I've done is I've put this up here. And this is number seven, uh, the last of the lever problems. And what we have is a tweezer. And if you think about how a tweezer works, uh, I'm going to go ahead and sketch a tweezer up here. Uh, let me choose a color you can see, like this orange color. So if I sketch a tweezer up here, it kind of looks like, kind of looks like I don't have that layer active. It kind of looks like this. Then the other side of the tweezer comes down like that. My two prongs sit apart. So what I do is I push my fingers together at this point. My pivot point is right here. So what we really have here is we've got that uh, class three lever relationship. So we're only going to look at half of that tweezer. So we're only looking at half the tweezer. So what I've done is I've drawn the, the pinch point on the tweezer out here, the part that's joined. That is my fulcrum. And they've told us that we're pushing in with our finger with one pound here. So that's my force of effort. 
And it says the force resistive is a splinter. So let me just sketch that splinter in here in red. And it says, hey, this splinter right here can only tolerate a uh, total force of one-fifth of one pound. What is that equal to? It equals to 0.2 pounds. So think about that. That's actually a force resistive pushing this way, resistive force. So that's what I've labeled right here, 0.2 pounds. Furthermore, it tells you, hey, the overall length from where the tweezers are joined to the tip is 4 inches. So with that information, we can solve this problem pretty readily. Hardest part was actually envisioning the drawing, uh, at least for me. So when we go to number 8, question number 8, what it's going to ask us here is it, it says, hey, what is the AMA on this bad boy? And as you recall, AMAs are forces. So I'm going to go my force resistive divided by my force of effort. What is that going to equal to? I've got 0 0.20 pounds divided by 1 pound. My units cancel out, and I end up with an AMA of 0 0.20. Really easy there. Now number 9 is a little bit more difficult. Uh, not so bad with the picture we have, but it basically says in static equilibrium, calculate how far from the fulcrum your finger would need to be to avoid damaging the splinter. Now, let's think about this a little bit. What we're really saying is the two moments are equal to each other. So let's look at this in uh, the mathematical terms. We're going to go the moment of the effort has to equal to the moment of the force. So I'm going to write this out and say that it's my distance of my effort times my force effort has to equal to my distance of my resistance times my force resistance. Looking at this real quick in yellow, what do I know? I know that my force resistance is a fifth of a pound. I know that this is uh, four inches. I didn't put that up here, but that's four inches length. Okay. I also know that my force here is one pound, so now I'm left to solve for my distance of effort. So let's go back into my white pen and do that. So what I can say now is DE times my force of effort, one pound, has to equal to my distance of resistance, four inches, times my force resistance, which is a maximum of 0.2 pounds. Now, we said maximum, I'll tell you why that's important in a second. Now, this is pretty easy. I divide by one pound, and I divide by one pound. All I essentially do here is I get rid of my pound unit, okay? And I can say that my distance of effort equals to four inches times 0.2 equals to 0.8 inches. Now the real question is, is that a minimum or a maximum? So that just takes a little bit of thought here. And you can see that if my distance of effort is larger than 0.8 inches, then this force, the moment of the effort, is going to be bigger than the moment uh, of the resistance. So what I'm saying, this is 0.8 inches maximum, maximum. If I start to push further out there, I'm going to overcome and shatter my splinter. And that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So if I start walking this force out to the end, the resultant pressure down here becomes, uh, becomes a pound further out until I get all the way to this point. If I push down here with one pound of force, guess what? I'd get one pound at my splinter, wouldn't I? And it would fracture, it would break. So hopefully that answer uh, is uh, clear to you, and also the reason why it's a maximum is clear to you. So that's it for the levers. We'll come back with uh, some more problems here in just a second.